Hey everybody, well good afternoon. Thank you for joining. If you're watching us here on uh, Facebook Live, appreciate it. Um, what we're doing today is we are exploring um, a learning space because we're talking about flexible learning spaces and want to make sure that they're really good for students and how can we design them and build them and make them student-centered. And I have with me today my colleague, <laughs> come on in, uh, Anne. Anne Jordan, she works, oh, tell about yourself. Well, I am traditionally um, a literacy interventionist, reading and recovery teacher. Um, but this year, we're doing something different. Um, we're noticing that our intervention students going back into the classroom have to transfer their skills. A lot of times, they need a different sort of setup than your typical reading and writing workshop. So we have um, what we lovingly refer to as a fifth environment. So I'm actually doing tier one teaching, running a reading and a writing workshop um, with what we would think of as traditionally first graders, um, but there are some second graders working down on first grade standards, and there are some first graders who are still trying to um, cover and get mastery of some kindergarten standards. So we took intervention and said, all right, we're gonna make an environment where they have their reading and writing instruction um, on the standard that they're working on. So it's highly personalized. Right. It's based on the needs of the kids. Yes and it's based on proficiency expectations or right. standards based on what they need. Now, I'd love to just do, I'm gonna take this off the thing, I'm gonna do a, we can do a quick walk around to the room and show the space itself and then sure. how you use yes. the space. Absolutely. Great, so sure. excuse my <laughs> awkward face here as I flip the camera. All right, so this is the room. So let's, let's where do you wanna start? Well, we can kind of start right here, go around. Sure. So. The first space that you're seeing, I don't know if you want me in it or if you want That's me. That's fine. Nope. Um, we have it set up so that um, when the students come in, we have um, three things that are that they have to do. They have to work with me, and they have to work with my co-teacher, Mrs. Armstrong, and they have to work on independent practice on their iPad of the skills that we're doing with them. So I do um, reading instruction with them, guided reading, um, fluency reading and Mrs. Armstrong does the foundational skills. So this is our foundational skills space where she's working on handwriting and um, the magnetic letters come out um, and they're doing more, um, they can stand or they can sit, um, but they're manipulating letters, they're um, using different um, modalities for handwriting. There's chalkboards, there's tactile letters, um, so that's what goes on kind of in this space. Great. Um, going. So over on our board. Oh, before we go further, what about talking about these chairs, the stools here? Okay. These are, this, this one in particular, I've never seen. This one. Oh, I just put. You did. You made it dirty. So this <laughs> Sorry. one has a little ball in it. Oh, that's wicked cool. It is. Um, that they can sit on, but the base is stable. And these are what they call neo rocks yeah. that have a little bit of a wobble bottom. Um, we, we through our title funding bought a variety, so we have some different heights and some different styles, trying to see what works best. So um, the verdict is out on which we like the best, um, and things work better for different kids. I think that's the that's key is that um, understanding that things different things work for different kids and having that. Um, I don't know, having like a wealth or uh, having a supply of things based on what you need. Right, right. That's, I think that's kind of what we need to really build towards um, having. So yeah, we're, we're working on, some tables are low, like these tables. Oh, sure. For the kids who are kneelers, um, they drag the bean bags over. Um, we just had a writing group in here, so they were, they were writing, on, like kneeling on the bean bags. And um, like I said, they can stand. Um, or they can pick which stool works better for them. Um, so we have the tables right now kind of this way because um, of our, our writing instruction, we're using um, some modeling a lot from the board. We're using some electronic tech. So these change depending on um, what we need. Sometimes the tables are in different spots, but right now they're set up so that the kids at our writing workshop um, can have a direction this way. So in order to meet the kids' needs, how important is it to be able to, to move those tables around? And to be um, able to have that kind of... Absolutely important. Yeah. Very important. Yep. Our room isn't as big as a regular classroom. 
um, but it it works for us because we have to have um, we have to have loud spaces and quiet spaces and teacher spaces and um, kid spaces. So um, these move depending on what we're doing um, at for whichever um, whichever standard we're kind of focusing on the most. And right now in writing, we're really trying to get them moved out of the early foundational skills of spacing and capitals and that sort of thing. So they are we're feeling like the table's important for that. Sure. To get the that's, that that's right wonderful. under control. So once they have that under control, then we're envisioning, you know, they may be writing with clipboards. But for right now, the early good penmanship skills um, is kind of what the majority of them are working yeah. on. So that's what they need. Um, so when they come in in the morning, we have a board up here. Um, and so they find, oh. <laughs> they find their name. Um, and so we don't have a bell, we don't have an alarm. We just kind of um, move these arrows. The kids will move it sometimes, we'll move it. Sometimes we forget to move it, but they, they just kind of work their way through about every 15 minutes. What we're finding with um, students who might have a retrieval or an attention issue, we're finding mm -hmm. small group is really important, but also that working memory. We don't want to overload the working memory. And yeah. then in a writer's workshop that goes an hour and a half without any break, that's really hard. So the type of student we have is not a um, traditional student. We have some students who are working right on um, their grade level standards yep. with mastery, but are all over the, like they are just all over the place, kind of messy Marvins, whirly, whirly gigs <laughs> in the room. So we have a design that, like I said, they have to meet with me for what you would think of as like guided reading instruction. Um, they have to meet with Mrs. Armstrong, and then um, they have to practice iPad. The yellow spots with the brain. Yep. We talk about green brains, um, open brains, and having our blue is our we call them the um, exploring brains, um, and we try not to talk about red brains is when they're feeling shut shutting down, but. Um, these are brain break activities. So what's ah. really important is that we have a space set up. So here, here, we have we were fortunate enough to scrounge enough iPads, and again, we use some of the Title IV A um, technology money that's now available to get some Osmos. Um, and so we have a brain break station. So we our literacy coach worked with the kids on, you know, what is. What does it mean if you don't know how to do something yet to make a mistake to um, solve things? And so we got a variety of, of um, Osmo activities. Mm -hmm. um, coding and Coding Jam is the favorite. I sat Coding Jam down and basically said, I don't know how to use this. This is new. And within two days, my email started dinging with jams that some of the <laughs> kids had made. Um, and um, so they, this is what they, they can pick um, which Osmo activity they had. And if you're not familiar with Osmo, if you go to their website, there's a number of words, a tangram, a coding, the music coding, the jam, um, and something called Monster, which is like a story. But even these, even these brain breaks, when they're doing the Osmo or whatever, they're still aligned, so working to probably towards yes. a certain yep. productive expectation. Struggle. Productive struggle, and, and it might not be an academic expectation, but it might be right. more behavioral Absolutely. expectation, yep. or yep. it might be uh, uh, like a soft skill at a CTE level or a guiding principle and type it's thing, right? Really, it's really just to get their brains cleared from what they were doing before they go on to the next thing. Well, that's so important. Um, and again, for their working memory, so that we're, we're not just overloading it with learning. So when they see the brain break, um, they can come to Osmo if they want to. Um, we also, in the beginning of the year, we had to do a lot with self-regulation, emotions when you're doing productive struggle, when a peer is you know, driving you crazy. So we have, um, we call it our calming station. It's, 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 it's um, I guess you would say coloring, except they have to do, um, we researched and found some books and talked with them about trying to, um, trying to go carefully and slowly um, and what we're seeing is some of the students that were melting down on a regular basis over um, having to solve a word in writing or having to solve a math problem. Um, 
because they have to sit there and go very slowly, um, it, it's teaching them self-regulation and it's one of the most popular brain break stations. They'll come over, they know that it's a quiet one. Um, we found some with animals and so we talked to them about um, you know, going slowly and carefully, but that this one is just all about feeling calm. Yeah. Um, a lot of research with, you know, with patterns, with the coloring. Um, it's a pretty. It's it's surprising that the kids know when they need to do an activity like this versus an activity like that. Um, we're starting to see them choose this when they're feeling frustrated. That's amazing. Um, and then we've turned it also into. We just made some little blank white books and gave them no directions and um, so this morning one of the students um, she's yep she went and got her reading book and she started to model <laughs> a awesome. little story uh, over the book that she was reading but it's that it's that level of being able to allow the student to explore and yep. go and then show you what they can do so, so, so the student is really now owning this center right. the student is taking right. it on their own to say we're making it what we want and right but they're also able to demonstrate their level of competency through that, and they're actually more refreshed and more able to do more stuff and better because they had that right. break and for what, again, for what they need. And again, it's about like every 15 minutes. So they might do, you know, they might Amazing. do word work and go to Osmo, and then they might come to me for reading and then come in color. So there's an alternating of I'm working really, I'm working really, you know, diligently for 15 minutes, and then I'm sort of working but on a different sure. set of skills and so this has really been very very interesting to see the students go over when they need to calm down we didn't expect that it's just kind of something that um, that happened and, and sometimes they'll draw a freehand they'll draw a picture um, but we kind of just the only expectation is it's quiet and you're working on being calm and you're not what you're doing is important yeah. like the picture that you're doing is important and they can pick an intentional I would assume it's yeah. you're, you're doing it with a purpose so what they um, they you know have a variety they can pick a crayon or color pencils or the markers um, whatever they want to do and so you might see them here you might see them working there you might see them on a clipboard um, here behind that is a scoop chair and so these get dragged around they never know where they're gonna be um, but they sit right in it, and they so you might I see love, them with a. One of the board. things that's so great to see in this, especially for the, need, the kids with the knees, is the amount of variable seating that you move things around as need be, and that the kids are really allowed to move things to where they want to go, and so they can kind of put their own stamp on this. And these, room. these students that we have that come in, we have anywhere from eight to ten at a time. Um, these are the students who have trouble self regulating, who have trouble in a bigger setting, but they're able to. To do it by they're able to do this just fine by us not setting a rule has made them some of them that would get frustrated aren't um, so because that's they have the been control. really exciting it's and so as a teacher we have one we have one guy who's he's kind of a stocky young man he pulls this chair yep and he pulls it over to listen while we were doing writing and then he pushed this aside and pulled up to right there so we let him go with it and he produced really good work but he as a teacher you have to let go of he's in a fuzzy chair pulling it up to the table but what we figured out with his body type and his core he um, these weren't working for him that worked for him because he's a taller bigger kid so as a teacher you have to get over what they're dragging where right. to use and that's you know that's that's it's a little bit hard well, yeah, because it, it's it's you know it's 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 hard. So, um, especially budgetarily and trying to customize it all. Yep, and those are fairly cheap actually from Walmart. So the other space that we have over here, we have a calming corner. Um, this is used by actually a variety. Anybody on our wing are come. We have different kids. The teachers know it's here, and if there's somebody who's having a hard time in the classroom, and just needs a break. They come down, they just let, they give me a thumbs up and they come over here. We have a weighted blanket. We have some pop-up books. There's usually an iPad over here. So you've even here. created a non-verbal communication um, yep, yep. method so that they don't even have to, they're, right. they're all agitated. They're kind of, yep. they can just kind of give you, the, that's, we taught, that's like, so the important. Classroom teacher that's will so say, great. you know, say John, you know, we'll talk with Johnny. 
So Johnny, if I say you can go have a break in the calming corner, they come in and they don't interrupt what's going on here and they we have a sand timer that gets moved around, but it's a 10 minute sand timer, so yep. they have a visual. And whatever it is, sometimes they just come sit. <laughs> just to just try to not get kids sent to the office. And so we really, really would like to have more of these around the school. Um, in the morning, we have a couple students okay. that transition from home to school is really hard. Yeah. So they come in and just... They just flap the handle and just, just lose don't. It. There's just not really any rules there. They they get into this um, kind of sensory canoe sort of thing and they, you know, however they lay, how, whatever they use, um, they usually come out of it more calm. So that's what this little sort of corner is. Um, and then this is where I do my uh, reading groups. And so got rid of doing reading around a table. Mm -hmm. um, I was finding the act of just coming to a table was shutting down some kids. We have some students with IEPs um, who are now reading on, on uh, grade level expectation for first grade because they don't know, I think, that they're getting reading instruction. So we come over and we sit in the chairs or the floor and I do their reading instruction and I don't even really think they know it's going on just because it's comfy. Just going over to a teacher behind a chair in a kidney table. That power dynamic. You could see, yeah. you, and I said, all right, so I did some reading and some articles, and I'm like, all right, we're getting rid of the table. Um, I tried the low, low table, it didn't work. And so what I found was, Richard Allington says, you get better at reading by reading, and I said, okay, so we're just gonna read, and got a lot of really easy books, and tried to make it be comfy like home, and um, we have weighted animals, that if they wanna hold a weighted animal, uh, in their lap they can. There's a lot of multi-sensory things. Yeah. Um, set up the shelf so that they know where the, these are all easy. We know that it's not hard. They can swap books in and out. So they all have a, they all have a book basket. Um, mm -hmm. And when they come over, they just start reading. And so if we catch them um, reading independently, and you know, I'm not a big one for incentives and I don't like to do the sticker thing, but if we catch them doing their you know, reading and they're really attending to what they're doing, we're just unlocking um, new brain break surprises. So the, the stickers aren't really the deal. It's like today somebody unlocked Play-Doh for ah. everybody to use because they got five independent. They were caught five times reading independently with um, But that's purpose. a PBIS strategy and it's a, gamif and it's a gamification strategy so, that also you no know, it it they it works for some kids and it works for a lot for a lot of kids actually because they like having those clear challenges to meet and to explain they love the idea of unlocking challenges cuz at the gamified nature well, of that's our that's what we were trying with for the kind of the game that's great and um but it benefits kind of everybody and it's a multi, it's a multi-sensory brain break that they don't <laughs> they think it's play-doh but it's actually it's, you know, we have so much the scissors and different things. So that's now a choice that they can do during that, that brain break time. So we took pictures of everybody, um, you know, show us what it means to do real reading. And um, so they kind of, that's what this corner, it's actually an instructional space, but it looks very... It looks very cozy. And it, and it's very, it's, it does not look like a traditional sit and check space. Pennsylvania, she comes in and sees me laying on the floor, I am teaching reading. I mean, we call it book play, and it's, but it's really body reading. Um, so we have a couple of odd little spaces where um, if we need some extra practice on um, word recognition or um, that's what we have this kind of space for. So like the pillows and the chairs move around. We just don't know, you know, exactly where they're going to be. Okay. So that's how our that's how our space works. You work a little, you give your brain a break, and you work a little more. Let's put this back. Flip this around. Oh, wrong button again. Oh come on. All right. Well, that's it. That's our first Facebook Live event. <laughs> uh, again, Ann Jordan, um, teacher extraordinaire here at Ridgeview Community School um, up in Dexter, Maine. Um, any way that you want to 
just tell the folks out there that you want to they can connect with you or Twitter, um, anything like uh, that. Probably good old fashioned emails, just a Jordan J O R D A N at aos ninety four dot org. I'll put that in the uh, in the notes and the comments down below. And we're just this is all this is this is new to us. Brand so new. We're, we're fumbling through. Trying it out. Yeah, but and it, that's and that's that's such a great thing to have. I think to uh, to be able to try and. But you, but you're seeing traumatic yes. gains yes. with the kids. We are who, in a traditional school setting, might not make those gains. Exactly, right. That's all we yeah. can ask for. That's what the power of a, an effective learning space and a, and directed instruction. Thank you, man, for your time. I you're appreciate welcome. it. And you're welcome. thanks so much. We'll see you soon. <laughs>